gentlemen, here are the principals first. In the blue corner to my right, wearing the black trunks and gold accessories. He weighs in at 114 pounds. His professional record, 40 victories without a defeat, two draws, and 24 wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Albuquerque, New Mexico, the WBO Super Flyweight Champion of the World, Johnny Mi Vida Loca Tapia. Tapia. His opponent in the red corner wearing the gold trunks, red accessories. of the world. Come on out, John. Come on out. Hey. Come on. Uh, this will be a clean fight. You protect yourself at all times and obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Touch gloves. Come on, touch them. Let's go. Gloves are too high. Jim, I've often used the expression that boxing is the theater of the unexpected. What would be unexpected now, given some of the events of recent weeks and months, would be a great fight without incident in or out of the ring, and that's what we're all hoping for. Over 10,000 tickets sold. More outside clamoring to get in, even as the first bell is sounded. Last week, we went to a so-called heavyweight championship fight, which could never have sold this many tickets. Or arouse any passion at all. And the passion here, it's thick enough for you to feel it. Round one begins. They waited years. Tapia loves to start fast. Romero will want to establish his technical superiority and his punching power early on. Tapia wants to lure Romero into a war. Tapia to the body and the crowd goes wild. punch has mean intentions. Every punch is meant to hurt the opponent here. Yeah, it's gonna take a round or two before these guys actually get into what they really do. Crowd chanting, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. The Tapia followers in this crowd are over the top with excitement. And in that sense, they mirror the mood of the fighter. His trainers only hope they can control his overwhelming passion for this task. These early rounds will be just about burning energy and trying to get into a rhythm, right, George? Yeah, and you're trying to establish if I can touch him with my left jab, like they said in training camp, if I can hit him with my left hook, like they said, and these things don't happen for a round or two. Tapia saying earlier this week, Danny's going to be surprised that if he hits me, I'll laugh. Romero said he's going to laugh all night. <laughs> Tapia digging to the body with two left hooks and smiling as Romero lands a counter left. Hard left hook inside by Romero. Tapia drops his hands and stares. Romero up and under with the right hand. Solid blows landed early by both fighters. The Tapia seems to be ahead on power at this point. It would be wise of Romero to kind of jab to the body, jab to the back, head, and kind back. of get a little back. juice out of those balloons. Romero more the conventional fighter in style, and he loves to get the left hook to the body as well. Both fighters rely on that punch.
Romero is actually cutting the ring out from time to time. He's dictating where Tapia is going to stand and where he's not going to stand. Tapia moves to the left, and Romero goes over there and says, no, you don't. Both fighters off to an energetic start in round one. so hard. Just stay calm. You're quicker than this guy. They lose. The monkeys. I get it. They lose. Lose that jab. Keep that. Stay calm. Stay calm. Hey, you have to notice me? Yeah. You got him to turn his back on Let this. That on left upper, that uppercut, you're coming back. You got too many guys in the corner. Here we go. That uppercut is working. Now use it. Off your jab. Where's my monkeys? I got it. I guess me. Okay. All snap, keep looking at him, keep taking him where you want to take him. And there it was, George, as you said. Romero conscious of wanting to command the space in the ring, and his dad saying to him, you take him where you want to take him. Punch stat numbers in round one, remarkably similar. Tapia 22 of 64, Romero 20 of 67. Romero relying a little bit more on the straight left jab. The object here is for Romero to get from side to side so he can get his left foot on the outside of Tapia's left foot and he can control things. Romero doing a good job of keeping his hands up. Tapia looking to dig to the body underneath those high hands of Romero. Inside by Johnny Tapia, step back, step and he ties step up back, Romero as Danny step steps in. Step back, come on, let's go. Romero does a lot of bouncing left and right, but he gives not one ounce to Tapia as far as moving back after he punches him. He establishes, I am the aggressor in a funny kind of way. So far, the fight has taken place at center ring. Neither man has gone to the ropes yet. They exchange punches in the center of the ring. Again, Johnny Tapia lands a hard left hook. And Tapia pumping to the body in the clinch. Both fighters seem to have burned off the initial Meanic energy buzz. They're settling into a groove, and Johnny Tapia is proving surprisingly effective inside with counter body shots. Danny Romero trying to score up top with power. As a matter of fact, Tapia is doing only counter punching at this point. He's waiting till Romero does something, then he counters. Strictly counter punching. And Tapia investing more in the body. In these early rounds, right hand was blocked by Romero. Crowd loved it, but it was right onto the glove. Romero knows exactly what he's doing with these feints. He goes down low, up high, and it creates a lot of muscle tension in Tapia, so he's better be careful. This guy is sizing him up for something big. Romero is sizing him up. This tells you something about youth boxing in Albuquerque. Look at how well-schooled both fighters are. Both have an excellent left jab. That was a left-hand, left-right combination by Romero. By Danny Romero. Best combination of this round for Romero. Tapia again digging the left hook to the body. Continuing the counter inside as Romero comes at him. Romero trying to block that Tapia left hook with his right elbow. And Johnny nods for the crowd as he comes back to the corner. Keep moving them around. No? Keep moving them around. You keep moving them around. And you're swinging your right hand. Okay. That's why it's not working. Okay. You might need to go like that. Keep moving him around, huh? He's already starting to step down. Yeah. Keep, keep two steps on him, huh? Okay. Bang, step back, bang, all right? Double and triple jab, and take your right hand behind it. You hear that, baby? Double and triple your jab, and take that right hand behind it. 
All right? Is this speed, Johnny? I like that right uppercut stepping over, baby. You'll knock him out with it. But keep digging that belly. Keep digging that belly. As I said earlier, Tapia is an underrated boxer. He's picking his spots. You see as he goes to the body there. And so far, his aggression has been very well under control, which is the secret to his success in this fight. In the first two rounds, by CompuBox numbers, Johnny Tapia landing more power punches than Danny Romero. And you can see that Harold Letterman gives the early going to Tapia. Joining us now at ringside, world welterweight champion Oscar De La Hoya. And Oscar, what a brilliant exhibition of boxing skills in the first two rounds by these fighters. It's a beautiful exhibition. These two fighters were made for each other. Johnny Tapia right now is fighting a very smart fight. He's sticking and he's moving. Right now, Daniel Romero, he's uh, trying to land that big bomb. But once he tries to throw those punches, Daniel Romero is out. I mean, I'm sorry, Johnny Tapia is going away. So he's fighting a very smart fight. Do you think that Tapia can continue to neutralize Romero's power? If he keeps his calm and cool and stay collective up in that ring, he will beat Danny Romero. And the crowd once again getting on the bandwagon for Tapia. Now that's the first time we saw Romero respond to one of Tapia's feints. That's not a good sign. And Tapia, who as you pointed out, was countering mostly in the second round, now starting to initiate some of these exchanges. Jules. And he starts it with feints. That's great for an experienced fighter. Tapia able to land the jab. Romero missing a little bit short. Johnny Tapia exploiting Romero so far, almost as though he has a reach advantage in there. The tail of the tape doesn't so say, say so, but Tapia able to land. Romero short with his punches, Oscar. He's uh, using moves that I've never seen before, that I haven't seen from Johnny Tapia, and he's doing very well. At this point right now, he's doing perfect. Great footwork by both fighters, but again, particularly Tapia. Yes, definitely. Uh, Johnny Tapia has been working in the gym. He's been working hard, and he's been learning in the gym, which is uh, supposed to be the right thing to do when you're a world champion. Yeah. Well, the great sign about what Tapia is doing here is that he wants to win so badly that he's controlling the emotions that normally get out of control in the ring. Right, exactly. He's keeping his calm and his, and his cool. He wants to make sure that he wants to give a good performance, but at the same time, win this fight. He wants to, he wants to please the crowd, but he wants to please himself. He wants to, he wants to show that, that he is a good boxer, not only a brawler. In case you've just joined us, Johnny Tappy in the black trunks, Danny Romero in the gold, Oscar De La Hoya joining George Foreman and Larry Merchant and myself, Jim Lampley at ringside. Third round of this 115-pound world championship between the two fighters from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Happy is doing a little smile and maybe a little overconfident because, believe me, he's playing with fire here. He better win and be serious about it. Romero going back to trying to establish his jab, which seemed to be part of the plan in round number one. You heard his dad telling him between the second and third rounds that he ought to dispense with the looping right. Tapia lands a hard right hand counter as the third round comes to a close and celebrates by leaping into the air. By punch stat numbers, another huge round for Tapia. That right hand left hook to the uh, right hand of the body left hook and knock his ass out. Set him up for it with a one-two. One-two, pull out, then come back to the body left hook. He's going to your face now, too. He's scared. He's going to your face. You look good, son. In and out, box this guy and have some fun. We look good, not you just me, us. You own him, son. Listen you to own Johnny. Him. Okay. And Oscar. All right, Oscar, you've had some inner city rivalries. Gennaro Hernandez, uh, Ruelas. Right. What is it like? I mean, do you feel almost too excited at the beginning of the fight and it has to wear off? Well, you feel excited because, you again, you want to please the crowd, your hometown crowd. You know, Albuquerque right here is in the house and he's trying to please the crowd. But after a few rounds, after the maybe fifth, sixth round, he'll, he'll, he'll try to slow it down and try to focus on his game plan, try to win this fight. Hey, how about this crowd, Oscar? You got a huge reception and you were introduced at ringside before the fight. This is as energizing a crowd as we've heard in a long time. Every time I go to Albuquerque, the crowd is just amazing. I mean, they uh, I feel that they love me over there, and it's a beautiful crowd. You ought to fight there sometime. One day we will. All right, Oscar, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very Pleasure much. Pleasure to have you here, as always.
We'll look forward to seeing you September 13 against Hector Mato Camato. I will be there and I will be ready. <laughs> On TV KO. Happy Alanza left hook to the body. Crowd going wild. Romero seeming to try to get in closer in this round. Mitch Halpern pulls him apart to try to prevent any budding. Danny Romero attempts to close the space between himself and Johnny Tapia. Yeah, that was a little holding that a lot of people couldn't see. Unnatural things going on, so. Don't make too much of that. But with Romero stepping in closer, now that right hand looping across the top begins to land. In the first three rounds, Johnny Tapia landing power punches at twice the rate of Danny Romero. So Romero has got to close the gap and make his physical presence felt in the fight. Well, Tapia's done, done a lot of good fighting so far in the ring. If the fight goes round per round, he's better be willing to hold this tiger off. Tapia continues to dig to the body with the left hook hoping to sap Romero's strength as they go toward the later stages of the fight. And he's, it looked like he's establishing his will in the fight now. In the first couple of rounds, Romero was establishing his will. Things have changed. You go to a corner with a young fighter, 23-year-old, and you tell him, listen, the fight is won in the first couple of rounds. Get ready and pull this thing out. Now Tapia is starting to establish a stiff left jab. That's something Jesse Reed was working on him with at the training camp up at Big Bear. Commit to the jab, drive it through the head of the opponent. Well, seldom you see these guys using a stiff left jab other than Oscar De La Hoya. But yeah, Oscar commits stiff. to it. Oscar's got the best stiff left jab in the business now. Better than yours, George? I believe so because he can throw so many more. <laughs> Hard right hand across the top by Tapia. He's been remarkably effective in landing power punches. And he digs to the body one more time. Tapia taunting Romero for the benefit of the largely pro Johnny Tapia crowd. Step back, step back, stay, stay back, step back, step back, step back. It's very important for Tapia not to be moved backwards. Right hand after the bell by Tapia. Warning number one from Mitch Halford. Don't get, don't, hey, listen. Johnny, have fun with him, but don't get crazy. Keep those hands up. All right, in and out now. Body. Body. Oh, no. How are you doing? Good. Okay. Don't, Don't let him. Yeah, right, right. Don't let him dictate the pace, huh? Okay. You got him already complaining about shit. Okay. okay. Don't worry about it. Don't get square inside, huh? Don't get okay. square. Okay. Here's an exchange at the end of the round. A couple of jabs from Marrero, followed by a very good straight right hand. Tapia tries to show that it didn't bother him. Probably did. And then he comes back, wrestles him, and throws a few wide punches. Slightly better round for Romero in round number four. Landed eight of 21 power shots, trying to make his physical presence felt in the fight. Jesse Reed, the trainer, tried to... Uh, inspire Tapia by telling him the story of a very intense rivalry he was associated with and two fighters had the same girlfriend. He said, and the fighter who was under control won the fight. Who got the girl? <laughs> that was Bruce Curry against Monroe Brooks in Fort Worth many years ago. Harold Letterman, how'd you have it through the first four? Jim, let me tell you, I think Johnny Tapia's controlling his fight. I think he's winning on ring generalship. He's getting off first. Those moves to the side are killing Romero. He's digging that left hook to the body constantly. I think he's got Danny out of his rhythm. I think this is all Johnny Tapia. I think he's doing an absolutely great job and real, real good hand speed. And as you spoke, Harold, Danny Romero trying to turn it around. Twisted Tapia's head aside with a hard right hand shot. One of his most effective punches so far. And I really think the opposite because uh, uh, Tapia's doing a lot of playing around, dropping his hand, smiling. A fighter will do these things sometimes because something is wrong somewhere. I scored the first round even in the other rounds for Tapia. Tapia landing a counter right hand and a right hand up and under. Romero stepping in closer, making himself a little bit more available as a target, trying to land his own power shots, but giving Tapia the chance to counter. Hard right hand by Romero. Best punch of the fight. 
These are Romero's best moments the last 30 seconds. You saw him bob up out of that crouch and land the right hand. Now Tapia goes backward to get away from another looping right. Tapia comes back to the body, lands low. Alpern didn't see it. Romero Corner told him not to sling that right hand over. Try to make it come straight down the, mid, in the middle there. Good right hand by Romero. And the good thing about Romero, once he lands that right hand, he steps completely over to the left hand of uh, uh, Tapia, so he's out of uh, range for a counter right hand. But those right hands have shaken lesser men than Johnny Tapia. Tapia is taking those punches well. Doesn't want to take too many of them, but he has taken them well. Solid left uppercut inside by Johnny Tapia as he stepped back into the business. Romero right. stepping away from Tapia's right hand, but making himself available to Tapia's counter left to the body. And now Romero lands low, and Halpern does see that one. And Tapia goes back to the left hook to the body. And for the first time this round, we've seen Tapia's back hit those ropes. First time. Yep. Back to the rope, which is a good, interesting change. Solid right hand by Romero countering inside to punctuate his best round of the fight. Round five. Real Sports coming up Monday, July 28th. Brand new segment in Real Sports, not promoted before. A story on Mills Lane, the Nevada State Athletic Commission referee whom controversy seems to follow around. Forced to disqualify Mike Tyson because of his fighting against Evander Holyfield. Lane came back two weeks later and had the dreary task of having to disqualify Henry Akinwande in another heavyweight championship bout. Real Sports, Monday, July 28, 10 p.m. on HBO. Well, keep hitting him with a jab over here when you have a chance, okay? okay. Got it. Oh, well. You got him frustrated already, huh? Yes, All right. Up. Watch Romero with the right hand. Comes up out of the crouch after a Tapia flurry. And Romero went back to his corner with a little grin on his face as though he had discovered something. Let's see if he can perpetuate it in this round, whatever it is. Slight swelling around the outside of the left eye of Danny Romero. That's the eye that was fractured in his fight with Willie Salazar. Let's see if it amounts to anything. You see Harold Letterman's scorecard through six. With Tapia still in command, but Harold gave the fifth to Romero. I have it three one and one at this point. Romero blocking those thrusts by Tapia. Good counter right hand again by Romero. He's found something with that counter right hand. You know, and it's going home every time. But he had to step in closer to make it work. He finally did that in the yeah. fourth and fifth. And he's found out too. He's, he doesn't have to have the power on it that he had in the first couple of rounds. Take the power off, you get the connection. Do it real quick. A head movement and foot movement ballet there. The two fighters showing you their skills and command of the ring. Tapia going back to the left hook. Romero not giving him a chance to land as he holds his fire for the moment. Romero went back to the jab to the body like his corner told him. This is the first jab to the body he tried. Now he's going to the body. Things change quickly when she starts those combinations to the body. Romero's doing good now. Right and left to the body by Romero in combination. Tapia trying to come back, hoping to reestablish his jab. Romero out jabbing him for the moment. Tapia going into a little bit of a trough of inactivity here. And Danny Romero getting a chance to command. And, you, and with those younger, faster guys, you don't want to get behind and start trying to catch them with left jabs. And that's what Tapia's having to do now. Most of the time, you're going to miss. So momentum seeming to shift subtly in the bout now. Early rounds appeared to belong to Tapia. Romero landing more and more power shots like that and gaining the favor of more and more of the crowd. Romero blocking those shots by Tapia. Johnny hadn't been able to do much here in round six. Left hook upstairs. Romero is trying his best to make Tapia get on those ropes, show some frustration. That's where he doesn't want to be. Make him touch it. And he's hitting him with left hooks for the first time this round. Another left hook that backs him up. You want the Romero partisans in the crowd begin to scream and cheer, as did the Tapia crowd earlier. And that's, that's the mark of a good fighter. You have something in your bag that the guy hasn't seen all night. He hasn't seen that left hook by Romero. 
Well, we saw Romero when he won the title, uh, George, be able to change his strategy in mid-fight, which was amazing for a 20-year-old at that time. So he's got a lot of resources. Ball what up a hand, up, right up a cut by Romero. That was a tremendous round for Danny Romero. Fight that round. Don't let him back in the fight. Well, because he'll hurt punches. All right, don't bullshit with him at all. We just start snapping him. Snap your punches and beat him with your speed. Okay. Your hands gotta get. He's, gotta get He's starting to pot shot you. Listen, to Eddie. Listen, to Eddie. Fighters, <laughs> short jam. Go to and double it up. When you get inside, throw your double left to Follow the power, JT. When you get inside, you got both hands up there, throw your double left hook and then go to the body with your right hand. Don't get hit with that right hand. Don't stop in front of him, huh? Because he'll let him throw punches. Okay? How do you feel? Good. Work your way in. Okay? Here we see Romero as he works his way in with a straight right hand, and Tapia was backing up for much of the rest of the round. And in the corners between rounds, as you heard, at least three different voices in Johnny Tapia's corner. There is always only one voice when Danny Romero sits and listens. Romero more than doubled Tapia on power shots in the sixth, and he starts the sixth with a right hand. His glove hit the canvas, but Halpern's not going to rule it a knockdown. He warns him not to put his gloves on the canvas when he clowns. He could have ruled that a knockdown. Believe me. In a way, it was a knockdown because that punch hurt Tapia. And he faked, played around, and touched his hand to the glove. Harold, do you think that was a legal knockdown? Jim, let me, let me tell you something. He could have called it a knockdown. You were right. But it was obvious that Johnny Tapia was clowning. And Mitch Hopper, being the good referee he was, just warned him and said, quit fooling around. He didn't go down on the end of a punch. It's true that he touched it with the canvas, but... That's good. A reasonable call by Halpern. And Danny Romero establishing power shots again in the first minute of round seven. So Tapia goes back to trying to counter. Tapia was fighting a much better fight when he was counterpunching, not using too much of the ring. Now he's starting to use a lot of the ring, trying to be the aggressor, and he's being caught. As his corner told him, he's pot-shotting you. <laughs> As Romero lands more, Tapia throws less. That was the pattern in the last round. Now Tapia finally gets to Romero's body with the right hand and hopes that that can help him reestablish momentum. You heard Eddie Futch telling Tapia, go back to the jab, double jab, and then double hook. And that stiff jab that he has is, being, is really effective. Come here, come back first. You okay? Headbutt. You okay? Accidental headbutt. Headbutt. You all right? You guys all right? Let's go, come on. Well, you, you heard what Tapia said. You are right, Danny. I think they're beginning to develop a greater respect for one another, that's for sure. Well, there's no greater respect than two fighters who've been in giving their best shots at each other. Crowd tries to lift Tapia. Now, Tapia's starting to reach with a lot of shots. And that's a, what you don't want to have as a guy that's been established instead of the power puncher in the fight. Don't start reaching. That left hook hurt. Keep it up, keep it up. Keep it up. Ebb and flow. Shifting tides of fortune in Las Vegas. Early part of the fight belonged to Tapia. Romero has established himself in the middle rounds. Johnny Tapia trying to come back against that now. And Romero goes right back with that left jab in the mid middle of the stump. That hurts when it happens to you in the sixth and seventh round of a boxing match. And he's able to come back up with a stiff jab because of that. Romero out throwing and out landing Tapia during this portion of the fight. Johnny beginning to build momentum in the second half of this round as he tries to seize back the initiative that he had early. Hard right hand inside by Tapia. Tapia dropping his hands a little bit and that's part of what's giving Romero his opportunities. Butt. All right. I get it, I'll get it. I just want to get the blood out of you. He's backing him up. He don't like it. Back him up and start digging the body and the head. And use double the jab, too. Use your jab. Hey, I saw a roll with the right hand. Try to. Come on, keep doing it. When he throws that looping right hand, roll down, look where you are, and crack it. Not hitting. Okay. In close, it's hitting. Okay. But from far, it's not. Okay. okay. 
suelta de Sevilla, de mentira de la derecha rápido. Okay. You gotta throw those punches fast and don't let him get off, huh? Okay. But side to side, side to side. Okay. Constant pressure, but side to side. Okay. Here was early in the round. And Tapia got cracked, started to clown, came close to costing himself a knockdown. From above. Tapia turning to Halperin and saying, hey, we butted again to start the eighth round. Eighth round out of a scheduled 12. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through seven? Jim, 67, 66, four rounds at three. Johnny Tapia. I think he's got that big early lead, and that's what's keeping him in the lead. But I'll tell you something, five, six, and seven, I gave to Danny Romero. He's starting to pick up the pace. Look at that. He gets off first constantly. He backs Tapia up, and he's taking Tapia out of his game. Shots like that will win this fight. Romero getting off first, turning it around. I have it three rounds for Tapia. Two Romero, two even. The judges at ringside are from Kent, Washington, Las Vegas, and Providence, Rhode Island. Johnny Tapia goes back to digging to the body, particularly with the left hook. So effective for him early in the fight. Tapia reestablishing himself here in this eighth round. Romero is fainting, coming in closer and closer with that right hand one two combination. There it is again. Keep it up, Keep it up. So with counter right hands, Romero has cut down on the fusillade of Tapia left hooks. You know something? And the closer he gets, the better he is. He's at the point where Tapia is worried about his right hand, uh, Romero's right hand now. He's cut the space between him and Tapia almost in half from where it was back in rounds one and two. Yeah, you get closer and you start doing a lot of things you've practiced in the gym. Left hook lead by Tapia. Tapia not starting off with the jab, perhaps as much as his corner would appreciate. Remember, Eddie Fletch, Jesse Reed, both classical training types. They like to see a guy work behind the jab. Yep. The folks at home can count the times Tapia's body is starting to hit those the ropes. And that does nothing but fire up Romero, because that's what he tried to do early in the Step fight, to rail him into the rope. Good left hook to the body by Romero. Tapia comes inside, manages to land the left hook up top. Romero with a straight left hand as they back away from each other. Romero misses with the right. Tapia measuring and looking for a chance to go back to the left hook. These fighters are working. This Tapia beginning to tire every time he shakes his arms like that, George. He's trying to relieve tension from his arms. You know, because this uh, Romero's giving a lot of feints. Feints give you more muscle tension than actually punches. Let him up, let him up, Tighten let him up, up all night, you don't know what to do. All right, right hand by Romero. Tapia landing to the body. Connect percentage by copy box right numbers. He's rising through the course of the fight. All the way, all the way in. Round four on. 31 percent, 36 percent, 32, 39, 44 percent connect percentage in that last round, and that's a function of what George talked about. Romero getting closer to Tapia. Constant pressure. Okay. But side to side, huh? Side to side, side to side. Outside and one to one. Smart fighter swing just deal time. Yes, sir. Take it easy. Yeah, and in and out, in and out. Use the jab. You're going down. Combinations, combinations. For all the build-up, the long wait, the passions involved, the rivalry, what we have here is a spirited, high-class boxing match. It's going to come down to the four championship rounds, 9, 10, 11, and 12 upcoming. Romero's corner gave him the uh, go-ahead now to start putting together much, a lot of punches, which means he's going to have to step forward and not worry about the counter punches. And it's effective. Romero lands the left hook. Tapia gets a left hook into the body. 
Good left hook by Romero. That's all right, come on, put those heads up. Happy is corner asking him to jab, and still he doesn't reward them for that. Not jabbing nearly as much as he did in the first few rounds when he had the initiative in the fight. No, that Romero never stops. He doesn't be still. Whenever he's still, Tapia makes him pay. So as long as he's moving around, he's in, he's in safe. You got to start out tending to doubt a guy who's been trained his whole life by a police athletic league volunteer trainer. But Danny Romero has it all. Now here comes Tapia. The one time that Danny Romero decided to stop, stand still, he started to pay for it. Tapia came alive and brought the crowd with him. Good right hand by Tapia. His Open best punch in several rounds. No matter what he does, Romero is right back into his face, up and down. Tremendous discipline shown here by Danny Romero. It didn't go well for him in the early rounds, but he stuck to the task and began to chip away and find his opportunities. Good overhand right and counter right. Doesn't look like there's truly any bad blood with those guys. Nope. It, it looks now as though, as though they respect each other enormously and are fighting a tactical boxing match. That's right. Romero is starting to do now, making Tapia get his feet crossed together. Johnny showed his sportsmanship there. Had a chance to load Ta Romero over when Danny was in an awkward position, and he held his punches back because he knew it would be unfair. we go to the closing rounds, Johnny Tapia has a vast edge in experience. He's been this deeply into a prize fight many more times in his career than has the younger Danny Romero. That's a way to work. Look like a world champion. Start touching him the same way. Just play with him. Play with him. What happens when you stay in Give some water. Give some water. Why don't we rinse out my mouth? Please I love you, Albuquerque. Big Bear, I say hi. Hey, another Three. round like that. Three. Another round like that. Three. Play with him. Play with him. He's Three. getting frustrated. He's got his nose all busted up. So you're working fucking good with the jab, Johnny. Come on, stay Down a little. Okay. Yeah. okay. But, but with your jab, huh? With your jab. Don't throw it by itself. Okay? How you scoring it? Close. It's close. It's close, but we're, close. we're worried about that right now. You just got to keep working and don't let him get off so much. Okay. Let him get off some Speaking of busted noses, Tapia estimates that he's had 15 or 20 of them. Three rounds to go in the Battle of Albuquerque. And it's either man's fight, or at least you have to suspect that's the case, as they go to the championship rounds. Now Tapia is able to use his footwork, moving out of the way, and establishing that stiff left jab again. Harold, you've got it 87-84 for Johnny Tapia. Jim, I thought he had two good rounds at 8.90. He boxed beautifully. Getting off first, he had Romero bleeding. He was landing, you know, the good sound of punches, and he kept Romero off balance, and Romero's missing a lot. I thought Johnny Tapia surged into the lead in rounds 8 and 9. I have Tapia ahead by a point. I think it's either man's fight going down the stretch, George, don't you? Yeah, Romero started to pull away, and then all of a sudden Tapia got a second win, and he started getting advice like, you're looking good. Play with him. This is what you want to tell a professional fighter. You want to give him too much advice. And once that corner starts clicking like that, and you got a stiff jab, you can do anything right, you go, want. Let go, let go, let go, let go. Fascinating in the unpredictable life of Johnny Tapia. Three weeks ago, he fired Jesse Reed tonight. Reed is the primary voice in his corner. Straight right hand landed for Romero. Another headbutt. 
In that corner. In that corner. In that corner. Both fighters hurting corner, from this butt. Oh, it's no blood, corner, apparently. That's accidental also, okay? No cuts, all right? You okay? Accidental butt. You okay? No blood right, on Romero. Let's go. Come on. No blood visible on Tapia. Stands up and backs okay, away. Okay, step back, step back, and rest his hands. Come on. Remember, Tapia was told by his corner to give him the green light to play with him. So, and he's doing as much. Great right hand by Tapia. As Romero charges in. Happy commanding the space in the ring and lands another right hand over the top. Romero chasing back without effect. Romero going back to the jab. Trying to regain his command over the space in the ring. Now Romero is trying to reach with that overhand right. He's not thinking about where he's going. He's not watching and he's just throwing it. Early on, he was calculating, and he had it all measured. Romero just missed with the long right hand. Tapia showing you he's got his energy left. Both fighters tremendously conditioned with great stamina so far. There you saw them, their heads collide. Tough hombres. Neither one came out with a cut. Think about those headbutts, they hurt a lot more than a punch. They sting and sting and sting. Ouch. Huh? Okay. Throw them down the middle, you're starting to open up too much. Okay. Throw them down the middle, huh? It's straight right hand left hooks, not around, huh? Okay. You gotta throw straight right hands at him when he's stepping in. Okay. okay. We're getting too close, you then get too close for him. Okay. Right hand and drill him with that uppercut on the right side. Albert Kirky, I'm your champion, Big Bear. Hi, I love you. Stay here, deep breath. Johnny, have fun with him. Have fun with him, son, have fun with him. I've never heard a corner tell a fighter to have fun. Do you think he needs to clown with him, George? No, they're trying to tell him in his own words, relax. You're the man out there. We believe in you. So go out there and do what you do and have some fun with him. That's the best advice you can give an experienced fighter, especially when you haven't been in training camp a long time with him. Especially a guy who genuinely loves to fight as Johnny Tapia does. You know what I find myself wondering, guys? All the people in Albuquerque have been building up to this for years, investing their emotions in these two men. And we have a fight that's a, a, a beautiful boxing match, but I wonder if it will really satisfy them if it, it doesn't come to a final conclusion. Well, it should, because it's been a marvelous demonstration of the trained skills of the two fighters. I'm not sure that everybody interested in this fight understands trained the skills. This has been a dynamite fight. It's been a terrific boxing match. Oh, man. Hard left hook to the body by Tapia. Crowd trying to lift their man. Danny Romero hanging in. Oh, that was your left hook. Kind of under like with. When you start getting close and not having to throw with energy, you got things in hand. Tapia clowning a little bit. Giving the crowd something to have fun with, too. Not only that, you're fighting a young boy. You got to do a lot of things in there <laughs> to make him think something. Uh, Romero has a round and a half. He may need to do something dramatic to pull this fight out, which means at least a knockdown. And he doesn't look like he can get it. Don't count out the possibility of a Romero knockout late. He has twice in his career knocked out opponents in the 12th round. You don't see it all that often. Now Tapia is starting to get his shoulders into the fight. Where not, not only he's having to run away as before, he's just turning his shoulder slightly. Once a fighter gets that kind of leverage and that kind of confidence, it's hard to get him with a good shot. Jersey Joe Wildcat. 
Tapia leaving his hands down. Romero taking advantage to pop jabs into Tapia's face. Johnny clowning. Danny scoring. Step back easy, easy, gentlemen. Easy. Watch those hands. Come on. Now Tapia lands a left hook and a straight right hand. And Romero comes back with a counter left. Blood from Romero's nose. And you heard Harold Letterman say that blood on Romero was one reason he gave round nine to Tapia. left nostril. Tapia trying to give Romero a hug as he went back to his corner at the end of round 11. Romero did his best to ignore him. Brown loves it. Last round, last round. Well, you don't clown on a man and get the hands up. Offer to hug him. They gave the world of boxing something to wait for, and they made it worth waiting for. Harold Letterman, your score through 11. Jim, 107, 102, eight rounds to three. Johnny Tapia, I think he's boxing beautifully. He's putting on athletic side to side, keeping Romero off balance with that left jab. He looks terrific with that jab. I'm telling you, he's beating him. I have Tapia ahead in a much closer fight. Tapia's charisma, not an inconsiderable factor down the stretch. And we saw what happened to Brunel Whitaker here when he clowned in the last round against Oscar De La Hoya and got dissed by the judges. Of course, little did Brunel know that he had already lost the fight on the three judges' scorecards. Tapia clowning here. Let's see if it'll hurt him. Clowning, you don't get points for clowning and putting on a show. They want to land, you need to land some punches. And if this fight is close at all, Romero has pulled it out in this round, if it has taken that. More than half the round still to go. Romero looking to land that one clean shot that might put Tappy in trouble. Neither man has really been stunned in the fight. It has been, as Larry pointed out, a tactical boxing match all the way. In one sense, Jim, both men have so much invested in this that they're almost afraid to lose. And that's why the fight has gone this way. Neither one wants to, to lose big. I don't know if they've let it all hang out the way Romero is right here through much of this fight. Well, Romero has got a chance now. If he want to win this thing, he should, while the other guy's clowning, go after him. But despite all the clowning here in the 12th round, let's go. You okay? through the whole course of the bout, I think you could make a strong argument that Johnny Tapia has fought the most disciplined, controlled, balletic 12 rounds of his career. Well, you remember, Jim, early, before the fight, I said he's a... He is an underrated boxer. He has boxing skills. But he tends to lose it during fights, and here he's maintained his poise and his control. 30 seconds left in the Battle of Albuquerque. All of New Mexico now rises to await the final decision. Boy, I wouldn't want to be a judge of this fight.
which may have put the postscript on a victorious round 12 for him. I have it a draw, but the two rounds I called even. If they, if the judges gave it to either guy or both, either fellow got both rounds, that man will win, and that presumably would be Tapia. People thought it would never go the full 12. But it did. Got him to get your gloves off. Yes, Harold, your final scorecard. Jim, let me tell you, I didn't think this was close at all. What an absolute beautiful performance. Johnny Tapia. He boxed, he moved, he doubled the shots, the hooks to the body. He kept Romero off balance. A big puncher like Romero, like George Foreman, like any big puncher, has to land a big punch. He didn't do it. It was all Tapia. Tapia deserves this fight. His crazy life came to a beautiful conclusion and a nice job by referee Mitch Halper. Let's go to ring announcer Mark Barrow for the official decision. tonight. Nope. These guys both fought as winners. Each could have went home with that decision and I would have been It was satisfied. a brilliant, brilliant display of boxing skills by both fighters. Let's see how they felt about it in Albuquerque as we go back to Nicole Watson, our reporter at the Isleta Gaming Palace there. Nicole, how did the Tapia crowd take it? Well, Jim, years from now the question will be, where were you on the night that Johnny Tapia and Danny Romero This is in his backyard. Now, each fans lived almost vicariously. As the blows came, they were animated. They were very, very excited. In the third round, he got them very excited and pumped up about the action. In the seventh round, he got them very concerned. And by the twelfth round, they were confident that their fighter made them proud and that he was the one who was going to be victorious for this one. Again, the question will be asked, where were you when Johnny Tapia took care of Danny Romero? The people of Albuquerque will not forget. And we're glad you were there, Nicole. I'm sure you won't forget it yourself. And let's go to Larry Merchant now for a word with Johnny Tapia. Larry. Thank, thank you very much, Jim. Con congratulations, Johnny. Congratulations, Johnny. You seem overcome. What does this mean to you? First of all, don't stop me. Jesus Christ he gets his victory, but I, I just, I've overcome everything. and. Uh, I give all the thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. What won the fight for you? Style, uh, different movements. I have a good team on my side. I just, I, I just listened to our game plan and I did it. 
Have you ever fought such a disciplined fight from start to finish? And did you think you needed that to beat Romero? I just did a lot of good things today. I had power, strength, and error. I refused to go down. I refused to lose. And whatever he hit me with, it was not going to hurt me. I noticed after the fight, while you were hugging your wife, Teresa, that you took a look over there to Danny Romero's corner. What were you thinking? You know, everything's done and said, you know. Let bygones be bygones. Let me live my life. He lives his life. He's a good fighter. He's a great fighter, and uh, he's still a champion in my heart because he held his title for a while. Do you feel somehow purged of all of the hard feelings that had built up for so long? We made it bigger than ever. And uh, the best man won, and I kept it like that. You said before the fight Grandpa. that... You said before the fight, Johnny, that you would be a free man after this fight. What, what did you mean by that? I haven't been a free man since I've been one years old, man. And I've lost a lot of my life, and uh, I struggle to keep my dream alive. Me and my wife got a good game plan. I just, I don't know what.